So which of these engines is more efficient? We've got a 170 Newton Swewin engine and a 240 Newton Swewin engine. I've always been curious about this, so we're gonna answer that question in today's video. So under ideal conditions, we've got a 170 Newton engine produces 17 kilograms of thrust at sea level at 15 degrees. We've got a 240 Newton engine producing 24 kilograms of thrust at sea level at 15 degrees. Now both of these engines spin almost the same RPM. So the 240 spins at 100 at max, spins at 118,000 RPM. The 170 engine spins at I believe 114,000 RPM and the 190 version which is the same case size spins at 118,000. So very similar RPM on these engines. Now I should also preface why we're using these engines. When you look at the engines physically, they're very similar in size. So this may be a case where you've got a, a big sports jet and you could fit either one of these engines in the aircraft. And this may be your determining factor of which one you actually install. You know, if you're putting that size engine, the 170 size engine in there, usually you can fit the 240 in there. So gives you different options. So here's the thought process behind this test. We have each engine installed on the test stand. And what we do is we've got the ability with the test stand to have it set to Newtons. So we're gonna add a factor of 2% as far as plus or minus goes. And we are going to install each engine. We're gonna have the engine running at, I'm just thinking 100 Newtons just to keep it easy, plus or minus 2%. So we're gonna get the engine happy and settled at 98 to 102 newtons of output. And then what we'll do is we will switch over to our measured fuel supply. So we've got our bulk fuel supply and a measured fuel supply. We can put a liter in here, half a liter, probably do a liter to keep it a little bit longer and maybe better results. So when it's at 100 newtons, and we're running happily, we're going to transfer the fuel over to the test fuel cell, and we will time how long that engine runs at 100 Newtons on the predetermined amount of fuel. And great time in the video, guys, to recognize today's video sponsor, and that is Solder Stick. If you're familiar with the channel or have watched the channel before, you know about Solder Stick. We talk about it a lot in videos. We use these things a lot in our builds here at the lighter side of RC. Now, this is the 500 piece kit. I love this thing. It is very, very useful and I use almost every single size in this kit during a regular build. Now, when I first saw the solder stick devices, I was very skeptical. Uh, I didn't think they would work. And when I got the opportunity to test these, there's links down below to my test videos. When I got the opportunity to test these things, I was instantly sold. We've done some high voltage tests, high current tests, regular tests, pull tests, all that stuff, and these things pass with flying colors. I often use a lighter to shrink these units during a build because it's so much easier to get a lighter inside the fuselage. Very, very nice to work with these things. And for you guys, we've got a discount code to help you out with your solder stick purchase. So if you use the discount code RC20, you'll get 20% off your order on the solder stick website. So use that discount guys, place your order. You'll love these things, guaranteed they are phenomenal. So thumbs up from the lighter side of RC and also thumbs up from trusty bent screwdriver. Now we're not gonna let you go empty handed. Solder Stick has sent me some giveaways for you guys. So we are gonna do a giveaway in this video on these two kits. These are the 50 piece kits. Get you started, let you test these things out. They are awesome. They come with all the little connectors in there. So in order to be entered to win these two kits, I'll ship them to you for free. One to one person, one to another person. You have to use the word solder. S-O-L-D-E-R, or as some people have corrected me, solder. Uh, so use the word solder in a comment down below. Be creative. I love reading the comments with, uh, with these giveaways. It's tons of fun. So use the word solder in the comment below. You have to be a 
channel subscriber, you have to give the video a thumbs up. So there's a thumbs up button down below, give it one of those and make a comment down below. The winner of these will be picked from the comments using the word solder. Thank you solder stick for providing these as a giveaway. Let's get back to the engine test. Now the key to all of this is comparing the two. Is it gonna be more efficient to have a 170 Newton engine running at 100 Newtons? Uh, so, you know, roughly three quarters of its output-ish. And, uh, or is it gonna be more fuel efficient to have a 240 Newton engine running at below half of its output? Very interested in this test. Now the reason for this test is a lot of people assume that when you go to a bigger engine, you're going to be using more fuel. And that's actually generally, the way I think about it, is it's the opposite because you're way further off the throttle, you're barely pushing the engine to its limits, and I think it's gonna be a huge difference between these two engines. So let's get our engines installed on the test stand. We're gonna start with the 170 Newton Swewin engine. Now just for reference, uh, this engine at max throttle uses 500 milliliters per minute of fuel consumption. So when we switch this over to the measured fuel cell, we're probably gonna be running at 100 Newtons for maybe three to four minutes. Somewhere in that range is my guess. Now the Swewin 240 uses about 800 milliliters per minute, so substantially more fuel at full throttle. But I think when we're way down on the throttle curve, we're gonna get way better results. And that's the point of this test. So let's get the 170 installed on the test stand. All right, so we've got our fuel system uh, initially set up on step number one. We've used our nice Jersey jug here with the uh, the single selector. I love this jug now, it's awesome. Uh, we've used that to fill up our test cell. Now we've just added an amount of fuel to the test cell because we have to get the air out of the line. So we're going to cycle the air out of there and then we will fill this right up to the top which is exactly one liter. Now the amount is imp isn't important as long as we repeat it between both engines. All right, so we've got everything set up. This is how the test is gonna work. We are gonna get the turbine started and running. Then we are going to throttle it up till we are somewhere between 98 and 102 Newtons on the scale. We're gonna get it running consistently and then we are going to switch the fuel supply over from the main tank to the measured tank using these two valves right here. One side feeds the measured tank, one's the main tank. And when we do that, we're going to reach over and start the stopwatch on the phone. Then we're gonna run the engine until we start sucking air bubbles right here from the bottom of the fitting. And at that time, we're going to switch the fuel supply over to the main tank and we will stop the timer. That's the process. Let's see what happens. Okay, we had a little bit of camera problems, guys, so I've shut the engine off. We're gonna restart the test and restarting the engine now.
All right, so interesting stuff on engine number one, the Swiwin 170. Uh, I guess it sets the benchmark for our 240 test. So I was a little bit slow on stopping the, the timer. We'll do the same reference or same procedure on the 240 Newton engine, but basically we were two minutes and 37, 38 seconds uh, to use the one liter of fuel. So we just started sucking air. I didn't let the air go all the way to the pump, but that is our benchmark. At 100-ish Newtons, I think our throttle stick was at 79%, which was right there. That tells you where your throttle stick is. All right, guys, we are ready for the 240 turbine. Everything's set up exactly the same. We've got the same amount of fuel in the test cell. Let's start this up. Well, to be honest with you, that is not what I was expecting. Let's talk about it. All right, well, here's the results. I can't remember what my throttle stick was, but I think it was like 56% or something. So uh, we'll review it on the video. I'll pop it up here. But this was our final results. Two minutes, 37 seconds versus 219 on the 240. We got one liter of fuel for both. Both producing about 100 Newtons is where we had it set at. Throttle stick. 79% throttle stick at whatever it was, 56%-ish. All right guys, just gonna plug my other channel quickly. We have started another channel here at the lighter side of RC. It is the lighter side of RC after dark. So please head over there. There's gonna be a link in the description down below when this video is done. And uh, head over there, subscribe to the channel. Wanna get over a thousand subscribers so we can do live streaming and, and such. So if you're watching this, please click that link, head over there. What is Lighter Side of RC After Dark? Well, we're gonna do the stuff that doesn't really belong on this channel. So it's live streaming. We're probably gonna live stream once a week just openly in the shop so you guys will see everything I do behind the scenes. We'll put some content on there that doesn't belong on the other channel. We may do some interviews and podcasts and such. So don't forget to subscribe to the lighter side of RC after dark. It's got the green AD in the logo. All right, let's discuss the results between these two. Now, the difference isn't huge, but it's enough. Uh, when you look at the data, it's about 17 seconds, 20 seconds-ish of, uh, of difference between these two engines. Now, my thought, this is what I thought was going to happen. I thought the 240 engine running at 100 Newtons was going to be leaps and bounds more efficient than the 170 running at 100 Newtons. And I was very surprised. Those results surprised me a lot. If this one took three minutes, I was expecting this one, the 240, to take 25 or, or last for 25% longer. I thought it was gonna be huge difference and it really wasn't. So 
Um, interesting results. I, I am quite surprised, honestly, and it kind of debunks the myth of, you know, put this in the, uh, in the plane instead of this one, and it's going to be way more fuel efficient. Well, it really isn't. You have more power available to you. Um, so maybe on that end, it might be more fuel efficient, but from the raw data, really doesn't make any sense. Uh, weights between the two engines too, you're about half a pound heavier with the 240 engine. Uh, of course, a little bit bigger in, in depth uh, or, or size and uh, does make a difference. So some interesting stuff to think about. Uh, very cool to be able to do this test and share the results with you guys. So thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to head over to the lighter side of RC After Dark. Subscribe there. We've got some fun stuff coming. Thanks guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.